Well, good morning, good morning, and good morning to everyone worldwide. I am Senior Patora, Dr. Diana Bravan of Jesus is Lord Fellowship Worldwide International on this beautiful Sunday morning for the grace of God. Today we're going to be doing a bit of, of, of prophecy. Amen. And I'm really excited about today's uh, lesson because I love it when I really deep search and I really study and I really write every detail down for the grace of God and then I face one attack after the next. You know that that's the power of the Holy Spirit. This powerful word that the Lord really wants to get out. Amen. When you're facing a lot of attacks, wow, the Lord is preparing you. Amen. And Satan gets mad and he tries to pull every detail in your life backwards so you don't succeed. But if many of you know your, your very own senior patora, Dr. Diana Bravon, I'm a, a, a woman of God who is a, a crucified, a armored woman that never fails or gives in just for you. Amen. Okay. As you all know, my name is Sina Patera, Dr. Diana Bravon of, of Jesus' is Lord Fellowship Worldwide International. Uh, since this is election week and everything else, I've been looking back into the core of where we are from where it began way back. Okay? Today's sermon is named Tracing the Mystery of Iniquity. By your very own Dr. Diana Bravon. Let us get deep inside prayer. Lord Jesus, as we gather this day, we ask that you bless those that are delivering your word, no matter where they are worldwide, especially your very own Senior Patora, Dr. Diana Bravon, today. We also ask that all of those receiving your word will do so with an open heart that your message will be written in your spirit man program. Amen. We also hold up all of the leadership of Jesus' Lord Fellowship and all of the prayer warriors, including our head prayer warrior. Her name is Rosemary Gutierrez. She just recently went in through surgery, so continue to pray for her complete healing balm of Gilead and her journey. Uh, during this recovery. We are praying in a quick recovery during this time. Um, also, uh, for the grace of God, this is Pastor's Appreciation Month. And also on the 30th, it was your Patora Diana's anniversary, wedding anniversary with, uh, with my husband, Jesus. And for the grace of God, for those who would like to send in cards or or what so have you, please do so to the Jesus is Lord Fellowship Worldwide International, P.O. Box 2752, Inverness, Florida. My name is Pastora Diana Bravon. That's who you send it to. Amen. In care of Jesus is Lord Fellowship Worldwide International. Amen. Um, for the grace of God. I wanted to tell you, I love snail mail. I love everything that has to do with post office mail. Amen. And various of you who knows that I, I save um, everything that you send me through snail mail in, in your albums. Amen. And I, I just wanted to say I love and appreciate and I pray for each and every one of you daily. Amen. Um, more announcements. Uh, Moments with Deacon Matthew. It's going to be in chapter 20, verse 17 to 38 in Acts on, on November the 11th, through the Lord's grace. Ha! Students! And all of the students to come for our Academy's Bible studies. For the grace of God, from January to December, we've been really deep inside the Word this year in the book of Matthew. Amen. And uh, I am so proud of uh, many of you, really all of you, so continue to pray for everyone that has breath to study to show themselves approved unto God. Even those who's been been under attack this year with illnesses and with uh, things that they face within the family or purposes of, of their computers or telephones, whatever gadgets that they have that they were unable to study. But within this ministry, there's no way 
that you could stop studying because you could do it through snail mail, through the email, you could do it, uh, you know, through all of the mail attachments or through the snail mail. Amen. Whatever way is directed to you for that set or certain time, this e studies is available to you that you will be able to study to show yourself approved. Amen. Um, we are coming in to an end soon, but January 16th is going to be the last um, week of the last book of Matthew 16. I mean, of, of, of how do you call it? January 16th will be the last book of the book of Matthew. And then we are going into the book of Mark. Okay, and yes, it is another intense Bible studies. So everybody who would like to join us, come on, send in your information sheet and, and whatever way that you would like to start joining us. We will send it out to you weekly. Amen. And you can also copy and paste it and receive it and place it in your files through our websites that we post it on every week. Amen. Uh, we are getting into a really deep, intense study today. My name is Sina Patora, Dr. Diana Brevon. Today's sermon again is Tracing the Mystery Iniquities by Dr. Diana Brevon. Folks, uh, we're going to get intense here from the beginning all the way to today in reference to our nation. Amen. And I love the way how I studied for the past few weeks this uh, this this um, Babylon, you know, for the grace of God of, of this prophecy from the time of our nation. And this is a perfect time for me to share this teaching with you due to the fact of the voting is on Monday, which I've asked many of you daily to raise your hands to touch the hem of the Lord's garment not to go against each other because who they're voting for but to but to pray over that podium of abraham isaac and jacob because if this nation needs prayer it is now and then don't look to your left or to your right or to your up or your down no matter where you are about who is voting for who or what start focusing within your heart and let the holy spirit lead you to do the right decision amen um babylonian Babylon, folks, as a city, it reached its height of glory during the reign of Nebuchadnezzar. This ancient and, and, and magnificent city, it was built in an exact square. It meant 15 miles of each side, or 60 miles around it. And it was surrounded by a brick wall, 87 feet at 350 high dotted these walls were 250 towers the top of the wall was wide enough for for six chariots to drive abreast outside the wall it was a vast moat or ditch surrounding it and it filled with water from the Euphrates River and it spanned by six drawbridges situated in front of of each gate or each gate having its own drawbridge amen um please have all of your pens your highlighters and your word ready to highlight because we got a lot of memo today amen isaiah 53 verse 5 those stripes it were applied under the orders of Pilate. And are recorded also in John chapter 19 verse 1. Therefore took Jesus and scourged him. Peter looked upon healing as, as a thing of accomplished. You know accomplished by that scourging. For in quoting the message of Isaiah. He used the past tense verb and said. Who his self bore our sins in his own body on that tree. That we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. First Peter 2, 24. Note two things in this verse. Our sins were born in his body on a tree. And our healing was accomplished by the heartless Roman scourging, the lashing, 
the beating which he suffered when he backed was when his back was lacerated by open bleeding stripes. Friends, if we believe one, can we not believe the other? Is not Jesus our Savior? Jesus our healer too? Can the work that he accomplished for our salvation be separated from the work that he accomplished for our, our healing? Surely this is the sufficient proof that healing is included in the atonement. But even a, a, a visage of, of doubt remains here. Ask God for an understanding of what the Spirit signified when he interpreted Isaiah 53 verse 4. In the words recorded in Matthew chapter 8 17 where we read himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness. Folks get your pads, your, your everything ready because there's a lot to memo here today. There's a lot of notes. Inside that great wall a few feet was another wall. Not, not much smaller but more narrow than the first extended around the city. Folks, the city itself was traversed by 25 magnificent avenues, 150 feet wide, extended north and south. Another was 25 magnificent avenues extended east and west. This formed 625 great squares, three-fifths of a mile on each tide. A wide avenue ran around the city inside the, the walls. At the end of each avenue, a two-leavened gate of brass was built into the city wall that shone in the light of the sun when they were opened or closed. The river Euphrates flowed diagonally across the city, and it <coughs> divided, and it divided it into two equal parts. Excuse me, folks. Uh, let me get a, a shot of water here. Okay, the Euphrates River it flowed diagonally across that city, and it divided it into two equal parts. Splendid wharfs lined the banks. Ferries crossed the river at each main entrance. At that central avenue, a magnificent bridge spanned that river. Oh, glory to God, at each end of the bridge, there was situated a palace, a tube where a tunnel ran underneath that bend of the river by which were located great banqueting rooms entirely of brass folks the chapel it stood 660 feet tall one of the golden images stood 45 feet high and it was valued at 17 huh, huh, 500 million the sacred utensils of, of the temple it was valued at 200 million the city contained one of the seven wonders of the world. The famous hangings gardens was 400 feet square and rising on the terraces to the height of 350 feet, folks. Man, imagine that garden. Legend tells us that Nebuchadnezzar's wife, it had been reared in the mountains because the Euphrates Valley was one of the vast level plains that she pinned for the highlands of her youth. To ease the loneliness, Nebuchadnezzar proceeded to build her a mountain adorned with every rare shrub and flower growing in the known world. This was Babylon, folks. The very syllables of the word rolling off the, the tongue in tones ministry of uh, mystery dark sinister rites amen and that ancient city 
the ancient city of Babylon, it perished, probably never to be revived again. But Babylon, as a dark and satanic system, is very much alive and is due to assume complete supremacy of this earth before the end times comes. Babylon had its beginning with the Tower of Babel in Genesis chapter 2. The name Babylon, it means confusion. God's command was to scatter abroad over the face of the earth and to replenish and to repopulate it. The Tower of Babel was built to escape another flood and to keep from scattering abroad. Hence this Tower of Folly was built in a rebellion against God's express commands. Though it was named by its builders Babel, meaning the gate of God, it became rather the gate of hell from whose bitter springs of idolatry the whole world had been poisoned. In studying Babylon, let let you who is listening and everybody who is following along in my scripts today keep in mind today that we are studying the mystery of iniquity today amen within the sermon second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7 please write that down in your memos and in your notes also please reminder to highlight it in your in your word from its birth down to its final form iniquity means lawlessness or rebellion against God this vast system of error is so like Christianity that the world's masses cannot distinguish between the two Babylon like every false religious system bore the stamp of unreality okay from the beginning of Genesis which says brick which is brick means man-made had they for stone and slime which is absalt for mortar both were substitutes for the for the real there's much that is man-made and unreal up to this present day folks huh and commensal or or unity mo or movements among religious okay among the religions today the founder of Babylon it was Nimrod or Nimrod Barkush in Genesis chapter 10 10 he was the grandson of Ham the unworthy son of Noah Ham's character is revealed in his exposure of his father's shame Ham though he brought he brought through the flood and then possessed the same spirit and character at those whose sins brought on the flood Ham means swarthy darkened sun or burned or one darkened by the light from the heavens how characteristic this is, folks, of the gospel, amen, hardened of our day today, who have been exposed to the light of Christ's gospel. When Noah recovered from his drunk and, 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 and realized that Ham had mocked his nakedness, and then he pronounced the curse on Canaan. Why Canaan? The, re uh, the reader and every one of you are asking right now, everyone who is following along and reading my script, and also those of you, for the grace of God, who are listening in, what you may ask of me right now, why Canaan and not him? Why? Because God had already blessed the three sons of Noah. And therefore, he could not curse what God had already blessed. So Noah passes over Ham and pronounces a curse on Canaan, who he knows to be a chip off the old block. 
Ham begat a son named Cush, meaning black one. Cush became the father of Nimrod. Let us note here that Nimrod's family is one overshadowed by the curse of God. Amen. Ancient lore tells us that Nimrod took for a wife a woman whose name was Samaras Semiramis, though not well known today. She's probably the most infamous woman who ever lived. Jezebel was a spiritual reincarnation of her and as such became the figurative symbol of the false church at the end times. Amen? At the end times. Semiramis, as the wife of Nimrod, became the founder of Babylonian mysteries, folks, and high priestess of idolatry. All idolatry! From the beginning, Babylon became the fountainhead of every pagan, heathen religion in the world today. Also, many of the rituals employed in today's secret societies have been beginning in Babylon. Okay? The cult of the, of the mother and the child. The cult of the mother and the child. The world is filled today with various graven images, right? Of a mother holding a baby in her arms. Did this have its beginning in Christianity depicting Mary and Jesus? Now, folks, as many of you knows me as deep searching and everything. Now, let's find out as we get deep inside the word. Amen. Let's find out right now. Building on the promised seed of Genesis, chapter 4, verse 15, Semiramis bore a son who she declared was miraculously conceived. His name was Tammuz and Ezekiel 8.14. Presented to the people of Babylon, he was acclaimed as the deliverer or in reality the coming Messiah. Thus was introduced the mystery of the mother and child, a, former, a form of idolatry older than any other known to man, fearing the wrath of those who still held the revelation of the one true God. The rites of this worship were kept secret. Gradually, though this de devilish system spread, the Satan so succeeded in deluding man with an imitation so like the truth of God that when the true seed of the woman came, they would not recognize him. The closed student came also, the closed student can also recognize here the introduction of the doctrine of the Trinity, folks. The father, Semiramis, the mother, and the queen of heaven, the same title of the Virgin Mary carried in, in, in the Roman Catholic circles of Tammuz, the son. This mystery religion, with her secret, writes it spread to the whole surrounding nations as the earth became populated by the descendants of Noah. Amen. Everywhere, the symbols were the same, mother and child. This cult, it became the popular system. Worship of, of mother and child was celebrated with the most disgusting. Okay, with the most disgusting and immoral practices. Images to the queen of heaven with a babe in her arms were seen everywhere. Though their names, folks, differed, even as languages differed in every country. The image was the same way, the same exact image. The Falhinikins, okay, the, the Falhinikins, they adopted the mystery religion. And being seed-going men, they spread the evil message 
to all four corners of the inhabited earth. To the Phoenicians, it was Ashtoreth and Tammuz. To Egypt, Isis and Horus. To Greece, Aphrodite and Eros. To Italy, it was Venus and Cupid. Within 1,000 years, the world that had rejected divine revelation, folks, divine revelation, had fully embraced Babylon, Babylonianism, the doctrines of Babylonianism, the study of the doctrines and practices of Babylonianism. It's very interesting one here. Permit me to list some of the, the major ones employed by, by this mystery cult. Amen? Amen? The doctrine of purgatory, that's number one. Number two, salvation by countless sacraments, sprinkling holy water, offering round cakes to the queen of heaven. Number three, dedicating virgins to God, thus sanctifying prostitution. Number four, weeping for Tammuz for a period of 40 days prior to the great festival of Easter, which who is it? Easter. Tammuz was supposed to have been slain by a wild boar and brought back to life. Amen. Number five, to Tammuz, the egg was sac sacred, depicting the resurrection. Or de depicting the resurrection here. Number six, the evergreen became the chosen symbol of Tammuz set up in honor of his birth at the winter solacist okay when is that winter solacist it's in december 22nd okay as through the lord's grace excuse me as boar's head was eaten in, in memory of his conflict in memory of his conflict and a Yule log was, was burned with, with many mysteries observances mysterious observances okay number seven the sign of the cross was sacred to Tammuz symbolizing the life given principle and the first letter of his name the sign of the cross did not originate with Christianity folks it didn't most ancient altars had temples of idolatry that have crosses represented upon them from back in the day. Okay? Israel and Babylonianism living over near over near Babylon. Abraham was separated from the mystery religion by uh, religion by divine call. The human race as a whole having rebelled against God and defiled themselves, God turned them over to the error of their own ways, drawing off a tiny revelate. What is a tiny revelate? Israel. God planted them in Palestine, the crossroads of the world, and a land bridge between three continents for the purpose of making them into a kingdom of priests to disseminate to the world that would be passing their doors to knowledge of the one true God. Amen? From the evil cult of Babylonianism, the nation that sprang from Abraham had constant conflict. Canaan was the son of Ham. And the land of Canaan was the land that God gave to Abraham. Why? Because Abraham's descendants, folks, did not destroy all the inhabitants of the promised land as God had instructed them to do. They were constantly tempted into idolatry by these people that they spared. Finally, under Jezebel, 
a Phoenician princess. The Babylonian mysteries, it were grafted into what was left of true religion and the ten northern tribes of Israel. By the intermarriage with the house of Ahab, Jezebel's husband, okay, Judah became polluted with Baal worship. Baal being the son of God or living or 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 of life giving one identical to, to Tammuz. Thus God sent Judah into captivity to Babylon to cure their idolatry. Never again was Israel guilty of this sin. Babylon, Babylonianism and, and Christianity. Babylon as a city, it was destroyed, folks. But the cult of Babylonianism, it lived on. And her high priest with a company of initiates with the sacred vessels and images it fled with Pergamos. Pergamos or, or the place of Satan's seat in Revelations 2.13 became the headquarters where the symbol of the serpent was set up as the emblem of hidden mystery, of hidden wisdom. From Pergamos they crossed the sea to Italy. Amen? The at Ruskan plains of Italy, it became the center of the cult, folks. It was propagated under the name Et Cruscan Mysteries. Eventually, Paul became the headquarters of Babylonianism. Now listen to me now. The chief priest with the headquarters at, at Rome, it wore a mitre shaped like like the head of a fish in honor of of the of the of Dagon of, of the fish of God the Lord of life and another form of, of Tammuz mystery it developed among the Philistines the chief priest when established in Rome it took the title of Pontifex Maximus Julius Caesar like all young Romans of, of, of good family, was an initiate becoming head of the state that he was elected in this nation, Pontifex Maximus, or succeeding emperor. Constantine was the great, the, the Constantine the Great, he became both the head of the church and the high priest of heathenum, heathendom. And later, the title was conferred upon all of the bishops of the Rome and is borne by today. The fisherman's ring worn by the Pope is in honor of the fish god Dagon, okay, which is Baal Dagon, or named Little Son folks named the little son and thus we have traced briefly the history of, of Babylonianism here today from its birth all the way down to today's present form what were what were the objectives what was the objectives folks back in the day okay what was its objectives back at the Tower of Babel Okay, what was the objectives back in the Tower of Babel? Here is your answer. Number one, one race. Number two, one government. Number three, one religion. Number one religion. What are her objectives today? What are her objectives today? They remain the same folks within our nation. Her final moment of glory will be when the Antichrist is crowned and takes over the reins of the world government. But her granddaughter, her granddaughter? Ah! It will be short-lived. Folks, Christ will come, folks. 
at Babylon with all of her evil mysteries will be destroyed. So get thee behind us, Satan. Jesus is about to come and he reigns throughout this earth. My name is Senior Patera, Dr. Diana Bravon of Jesus is Lord Fellowship Worldwide International. <laughs> Folks, we are a life-changing ministry. We are a going ministry, a growing ministry. We are a praying ministry. We are a praying ministry, a growing ministry, a going ministry that brings you the results. Amen. Uh, for anybody who would like to send in um, cards or whatever for the the month of, of, of ministry for the grace of God uh, pastors appreciation month to me or uh, your anniversary cards that a few of you asked for the snail mail address uh, to the PO box please send it to Jesus is Lord Fellowship Worldwide International uh, Dr. Deanna Brevon PO box 27 52 Inverness Florida 34451 there are many of you that are still asking questions and still sending it to our old PO box which was gone now a few years <laughs> glory to God but God bless you and thank you for all your thoughts all your prayers continue to, uh, to pray for our nation folks um, I tell you the truth without your hands being raised touching the hem of the Lord's garment over our nation for the grace of God, the podium of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is going to be in complete ruin. But with your hands touching the hem of the Lord's garment over our nation, for the grace of God, it's because of you, our nation will not be in sinking sand. And right now, with this brand new ways of election, you see it, it's in deep turmoil. And it also is turning a lot of Christians away from others in there's a lot of there I, I've been seeing throughout this whole election people going against another person because of who they are voting for it's not about that it is about you raising your hands to touch the hem of the Lord's garment and trusting as two or more whom are gathered in Christ's name together and praying for that podium of Abraham Isaac and Jacob amen that's what we need to do don't accept Satan to come in to steal, kill, and destroy you and your loved ones and everybody, whoever you are in conversation with about this, about this election. Do not accept that to happen. Don't let Satan come in to steal, kill, and destroy your joy. Just continue to raise your hands and trust in our Savior with all of your heart, folks. Amen. I am looking forward to the brand new season, the brand new year. Amen with each and every one of you. God bless you. God bless you, yours, and everyone. Please send in all of your prayer requests. Please send in um, your studies. Your studies. I am so proud of many of you for the grace of God who have been studying this intense book of the book of Matthew from January to all the way to now to the present. And for the grace of God, continue to pray for those who've been having difficulty in studying, that they've been really trying to study but have not been able to. Amen. I look forward to, to bringing you your reward under heaven of your GPA grades, certification uh, credits, and your grades, and your certification. I look forward for that day. We will be intense with the book of Matthew all the way up to the 16th of the brand new year of 2017 of January. Amen. After that, we are going deep again inside another intense studies, which I've been preparing for you already in the book of Mark. So come on out, everybody. Everybody, no matter where you live, get comforted in your chairs, in your seats, in your desk, no matter where you are. Get deep inside our studies and earn your certification. What's the payment plan? The payment plan is your life eternal under heaven. Amen. Again, my name is Senior Patora, Dr. Diana Bravon of Jesus is Lord Fellowship Worldwide International, where Jesus is Lord. Amen. P.O. Box 2752 in British Florida, 34451. Also, you could snail mail and send in attachments to, I mean, snail mail to the P.O. Box, but electronic mail to the headquarters, 
J-I-L-F-W-W-I at yahoo.com. Amen. Send in any attachments for the grace of God. God bless you where Jesus is Lord. Everyone who is sending me in beautiful cards for the month of uh, Pastor's Appreciation Month and also sending in um, anniversary cards. God bless you. I save every detail of your letters and of your cards. I am a snail mail lover like my mom once was. For the grace of God, I save everything of it inside your albums. God bless you. Have the most blessed Jesus filled rest of your Sunday with our Savior and with those the Lord had planned for you today. And have the most blessed Jesus filled days ahead to come. Please continue to pray for those who are going in for surgeries and pray for those that was released from surgery but are having difficulty in their recovery. Amen. And pray for those who are facing chronic issues, and I mean chronic issues, daily and those um, with multiple battles. Boy, I could relate with that. Um, that that faces every day. That one moment you're well and then the next you're not. Pray for all of our families, all of our loved ones in every direction. Place a breakthrough within their hearts and within their lives. And also their most difficult moments that Satan is just bounding them with. But I pray every chain is broken and huh, for the grace of God your lives are set free. Again, my name is Senior Pastora Dr. Diana Vivon. Please pass on um, the daily um, devotionals of the daily ponderings and the good morning daily devotions. Please pass it on to others. Also bring it in to uh, anyone um, who you know in the jails systems or or for hospitals or doctors offices spread the gospel about uh, you know around your state of my written devotionals also if you would like a seven day devotional uh, writings from your very own Dr. Deanna Bravan of the daily ponderings and also the daily um, good morning let me know we will send you an attachment Amen. Or if you're having difficulty with the attachment, we will find another way. So you shall receive a copy and you could print many out so you could pass it out. God bless you. My name again is Senior Pastora Dr. Diana Brevon, where Jesus is Lord.